Spidell. Yes, your watch looks grand with a Spidell band. Hollywood taxi cab drivers are so nice and kind. <laughs> but that shows you what happens out here in pictures. That's mighty Joe Young. One picture, and look at him now. <laughs> you know, ladies and gentlemen, everybody has been asking me why. Well, pardon me just a minute. I want to clean the screen, you know, so that you can... All see the show tonight. <laughs> I'm quite sure you'll enjoy you'll love the show tonight, really. <laughs> I saw it this afternoon. It's awful good. <laughs> so many people have asked me, why have I gone into television? Well, there's so many reasons. I'll mention a few. One is that I think it is a medium which will eventually engulf the entire entertainment world. That's a good reason. Another reason is I love the work. And another reason is that last summer, my son, Keenan, cut off my allowance. <laughs> Say, did you read the paper this morning? A very interesting article about a CPA, a public accountant. He married 17 wives without going to the trouble of getting divorced. And they only caught him when he forgot himself and he married his first wife all over again. <laughs> it just shows you what a rotten accountant he was, you know. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Look, Victor Moore? What? You want? Well, you can't come over tonight. I can't see you, Victor. I'm doing a show. I'm on the air tonight. Well, turn on your set. You, you haven't got a set. I say, Victor. <laughs> Just a minute, I'm talking to Victor Moy. Hello? No, I can't come. No, you've got to... Well, come down, I'll see you. Uh, Victor! Oh, I didn't know it was you. I beg you, Pop. What are you doing? Is it important? I'm doing a show. Yes, I, uh, I know you are. You're doing a lot of very good television shows. Oh, I'm glad you liked it. I've been in all kinds of show business, and now I'm trying to break into television. I yes. thought maybe you would be able to help me a little. Oh, yes, I could help you, yes. Yes, I can help you. Have you been watching television shows? Well, I've tried to. I haven't got a set at home. Oh. But I've been uh, looking in the windows, and <laughs> I uh, see a lot that way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what kind of... You mean you look right in the windows? Or? Yes, not the store windows. Oh, not the store windows. No. Oh. Now, I've been looking in other windows. <laughs> well, Victor, you can't... But I'll tell you, I will help you, and I can help you. If you really want to be... You're a great star. You're one of the world's greatest stars, you know? Oh, uh, I, yes, yeah. you should be a big hit and tell. Why, there's only one thing you have to know. Yeah. Just make up your mind whether you want to be a cowboy, a puppet, or a wrestler. That's all. <laughs> yeah. The main thing in television... It's costumes. You gotta wear funny clothes. Oh, yeah. I got a little cap here. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that is the matter. As a matter of fact, this propeller is much too small. It would never get you off you so large off the ground. <laughs> <laughs> I have trouble enough getting my fuselage <laughs> along the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, I'll tell you. Uh, I will help you. It won't take long. I'll tell you everything that you have to know about television. It'll take about two and a half or three minutes. Well, I guess I can stand that long. You do, huh? Well, see these curtains? Yeah. Well, here. Come on, come on with me, Victor. Here, you get a hold of that, and you push that way. Right. And I'll push this way. Okay. Now, you see, Victor? 
This is my old storeroom in Kane's storehouse here. Oh, yeah. I have props in it. This box is where I age my jokes. And over we have... <laughs> We have all kinds of... You, you know most of these. Uh, yes, I've seen all these shows, Ed. Have you? Well, when did you do that show? This show here? Yeah. That was um, 1928. Yeah. Oh, it was the most unusual year. <laughs> yes, it was. We had a Republican in the White House that year. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You know, here, 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 just get here. I know just what to do. Yeah. You need funny costumes. Yes, take off your coat. All right. That's all you need, funny costume. I'll make you the biggest hit in television. <laughs> all you need are costumes. Funny costumes. Yeah. That's the way to start it. To, I don't use them anymore myself. No. But I'll give <laughs> all you need here. I'll give you some of my old costumes here. Victor, all you have to do is to wear, I'll make you the biggest hit in television. You know? See? Wait a minute. That's only part of it. Wait a minute. Wait, I've got costumes here. Where do you see some of them? Here, wait, I'll make you so funny. You'll be... Let me see you. That's what I mean, you see? Now, here's a mirror. Here's a mirror. Are you all right, Victor? Yeah, I Yeah, well, there's the mirror there. Now, you... What do you think of it? I think it's fine. Yeah, it's good. It's pretty nice. It's not very funny. It's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, this costume may uh, bring back radio. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I don't know how that this is this is an invention of mine. I don't know how you see what it did? It's a phonograph record. It's for square dancers. <laughs> I don't know how this trunk ever got on like this. Margie! Margie! Hello, Margie! Don't tell me when I closed my last show in New York that I put you in there. Oh, no, it is. You haven't been here all the time. Not at all. Well, I'm, I'm glad. We're costumes. We're going into television. What, all the Merry Max again? We certainly are. Where are the boys? Just standing right outside. Hey, the come. rest of the Merry Max. Come here, boys. Come here. Oh, yeah. oh, right. Hello, boys. Hello. Oh, gee whiz, do you remember our last show that, that I had in I New York? Sure we do. Do, you, do you remember that joke? I told a joke, and then you came in and sang? Yeah, 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 yeah. sure. Let's do that scene again, will you? Okay. The Mary Max. Go ahead. Right. Go off stage a minute. Go ahead. You see, I told a joke, and then they came on, you know, when the audience were hysterical. See? <laughs> the joke was a, such a twist. The joke was about a, a man who became a scissors grinder, you know, and a knife sharpener. And two years after he was in business, someone asked him how things were, and he said business was great. He had never seen things so dull. <laughs> Are you playing the music, lad? Will you let us? Go ahead. I 
motion to show you this because it's a new invention of mine. This is really a wonderful thing. I'll tell you, the government has had a lot of difficulty with insects lately, especially bedbugs, you know. <laughs> and DDT and all those things, don't think This is my invention. You, it's a little bed. It's a tiny bed. You take it and you put it right in the corner of your bedroom like that, you see. And you go right to sleep. The bugs are not, they have their own bed. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to get rid of it. How is this one, Ed? Oh, that's great. That's great. You see, all you need are funny costumes. Yeah. You'll be the biggest hit in television with yeah. funny costumes. Now all you need is a sponsor. A sponsor? Oh, you have to get a sponsor. Oh, yeah. Yes, you see, because without a sponsor, you'll have uh, nobody to cash checks from. <laughs> you know what I mean? And besides that, you need a sponsor for advertising. Because if you don't have advertising in a show, you'd have nothing but a complete half hour of nothing but entertainment. <laughs> the world's not ready for that yet. <laughs> oh, oh, you really have to get a sponsor. That's right. That? Oh, uh, pardon me, miss. Would, would you like to sponsor me? How dare you! All I wanted was a sponsor. <laughs> I'm going to do advertising in my own way, ladies and gentlemen. I've been fighting every week. Every week I've been fighting with my with my sponsor. You know, I want to do it my way. He wants to. Do, he wants to have his own announcer here. So I promised him tonight he could have us announcer here, but I'm going to do the advertising nevertheless. But I never lied to anyone. I promised him he could have it. So here's his announcer. Would you open the curtains, please? See? <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen, you see, I will advertise in my own way, you see. <laughs> now, the, the Spidell, Spidell, my sponsors, they told me that this week they wanted to advertise a, a new ladies' band. And I thought they were talking about Phil Spitalny, you see. <laughs> but it developed that it's a bracelet. It's a ladies' bracelet, you see. And they showed me this beautiful new ladies' watch bracelet. And it's called the Golden Harvest. Wait, I've got it here. It, 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 as a matter of fact, it, it's not like any other bracelet that has ever been made. And this advertising, it, there's never been anything like that either. <laughs> Let me show you. See, I'm going to do it. Huh? Yes, yes, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, no kidding, ladies and gentlemen, once the lady, you see, I'm doing the advertising, once the lady sees this Fidel, which is called the New Golden Harvest, you see, and she goes to the jeweler, she'll buy it right away, because it really is a beautiful piece of jewelry. And look at the beautiful box that comes in. You see, you buy jewelry for your jacket, you ladies, and you buy it for your figure, you buy it for your hair, but here's the important place, see, and this is the Golden Harvest watch bracelet. I'm at it. What? I'm doing better than you ever did in your life. <laughs> you just go down and you buy this golden bracelet, you see. The sponsor claims that this bracelet speaks for itself. <laughs> go ahead, I'll give you the opportunity. Go ahead. Then say a darn thing. <laughs> no, go ahead. Close up. That's enough of that. Take him away and never darken my advertising again. I'll do this thing. Today, ladies and gentlemen, all advertising is done with twins. Now, I have twins, and I would like to show you how I would like to do advertising. Would you please open the cadence? You see? Now, which twin, which twin has the spy down? <laughs> Naturally, not this one. See, this is used for tying bundles. Now, this one here. You see, this is the twin. Thank you very much. You see, this one here, this is Spidell's Golden Harvest. Now comes, you've got to permit me to be serious. This bracelet costs $9.95. Well, what I mean by that is that you get a change from an $11 bill, you see. <laughs> this is really a lovely, lovely thing. And I think, do you, I want you to look at the graceful lines there. Do you notice the graceful lines? You see? <laughs> I'd like to speak to you more about this thing. Oh, that, that's great. That's great, Chef, but excuse me a minute. Just look at, I'm, I'm out of time. Just look at the graceful lines here, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness, Ed. 
Is this the kind of a product your sponsor? Yes, yes. He manufactures, yes. Yeah, this is, this is what he makes. You see this thing here? This is very, very interesting. I'm a fine sponsor. This is called the Golden Harvest. Oh. How do you do, Miss Harvest? <laughs> Say, look here, I think I've done enough advertising, and thank you very, very much. See, I, we could carry it too far. Here, Victor, come back. Come here, Victor. For heaven's sake, listen, I'll get you a sponsor. You see, all you need are funny costumes. I've got a great idea. You come to the nightclub, you see. You go down to the nightclub. I'll disguise myself as a waiter. I'll start the applause for you. What do I do in a nightclub? Well, I don't know. Do you know anything from South Pacific? <laughs> I know one of the chorus girls that talks. No, no, I mean, no, 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 I mean the thing. Do you know, what would you sing in a nightclub? Oh, I never sang in a nightclub. Well, I've never been a waiter, so you, you've got nothing on me. I mean, we're starting off all right. I, I'm asking you, what would you sing? Well, a long time ago, I sang a song that Georgie Coyne wrote for me, 45 yes. Minutes from Broadway. You oh, yes. Would you sing that? Well, I tried to. I I that was a long time ago, yes, wasn't it? Yes, it certainly was. Yes. Oh, it's 45, 40, 46 years, I guess, ago. Is that so? Yeah. <laughs> Hardly a man is now No, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> Listen, I remember it. I remember it. Now, I tell you what you do. <laughs> tell you what you do, Victor. Yeah. You get a piano player to play that for you, you see? Yeah. And I'll be the waiter, and I'll start the applause for you. Okay. All right? That's fine. To the nightclub. Come on. <laughs> you that hungry? <laughs> now listen here. Yes. I want a drink. I'd like some scotch. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? You're just hollering there. You're like so many waiters here. Here, here. There's plenty. You can have it all night. Hey, wait a minute. That's right. I said scotch. Well, I guess, well, it's no use opening a new bottle. Here, here. Just... <laughs> of all the waiters I've yeah. ever seen. Feel that way about it, Michael. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in any nightclub, our singing star, Victor Moore. I've looked all around, I can't find anybody that can play 45 minutes from Broadway. 
You mean we're the only two who really remember that? Let's like it. That's a tough buck. I'll accompany you. You will? Yeah. Well, you get prepared. Fun. Yeah, I've got the piano right here. Thank you very much. I've got it right here. The, this is a special piano, you know. It was loaned to me by Mr. Morrow, you know, Tevis Morrow. Uh, well, you don't expect me to sit on that, do you? No, 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 no. As a matter of fact, this was a big piano once, and Sophie Tucker sat on it. That's, uh, <laughs> that's uh, 45 minutes from Broadway. That's it. You think you're a member? Well, I don't know. We'll see. Yes, I remember. Oh, okay. Forty-five minutes from Broadway. Think of the changes it brings. For the short time it takes. What a difference it makes in the ways of the people and things. Oh, what a fine bunch of Rubens. Oh, what a Jay atmosphere. They have whiskers like hay and imagine Broadway only 45 minutes from here. Now, would, would you sit down a minute? Would you sit down a minute? I would just like to do something. I'd like to do... <laughs> I'd like to do something unusual. This is a very rare occasion, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to start out by saying that though I've been on the stage 47 years, that this fellow has been on the stage nearly 53 years. Now, please believe me. 53 years is a long time, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to tell you a little anecdote, which I'm quite sure will become part of Americana as far as the theater is concerned in our generation. It was the custom many years ago when Vaudeville was rampant around America here. If you played a uh, Vaudeville theater like Hammerstein's, let's say, the Victoria Theater at 42nd Street and Broadway, it was the most natural thing to find yourself three or four weeks later in St. Louis or Kansas City, some other city, and you'd be playing with three or four of the same acts that you played with at Hammersteins just four weeks prior to that time. Now, this is a strange thing. I did play Hammersteins Theater in 1902. And I was what they call the ex-added attraction. My name was in big letters, about that big at the bottom of the billboard. And on the top, the headliner in big letters was Victor Moore. And I watched him every performance. And I wondered all that week, would I ever be as great a headline, a greater star as he? You know? And as I say, as the years pass by, probably the only case of its kind in American theater are past, never crossed again. In 47 years, Victor Moore and I, as good friends as we are, we have never played in the same theater again since 1902 till tonight. And I wanted to take advantage of this opportunity, ladies and gentlemen, to congratulate a man whom I consider one of the greatest comedians that ever lived, Victor Moore. <laughs> you know, Victor, <laughs> you know, to hear that applause and that tribute, it proves you've not lived in vain, you know. Oh. You know, it's a marvelous thing to think through the years. You know, 47 years is a long time, Victor. You got me crying on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think that's wonderful for a comedian. Yeah. <laughs> you know, 47 years is such a long time, Victor. It really is. I don't know. They've even invented horses since then. You know? <laughs> 47 years is a long time. 45 minutes from Broadway. I can remember when it took 45 minutes to get to New Rochelle. What, from New York? Yeah, that was a show that Georgie Corn wrote about New Rochelle. Yeah, and for you. In those days, it took 45 minutes from Broadway. Well, that's yeah. the whole thing. You see, today the trains run faster. I could make it, uh, say, uh, 17 minutes from Broadway. Today. Well, that's the point. This is 1949. Yeah. See, we can't do the things we did in 19. Uh, two, you know what I mean? No, you can't. Would you jazz it up? Well, do you I think that 
with a, I'll give you a pill. You know, you, you don't have to... Uh, you know, the, I take them. So I'll tell you what I'll do. Now, just... Mary Max, come here just a minute. I've just asked Victor Moore to sing 45 minutes from Broadway, but in the jazz up version. Yeah. And we're going to call it 17 minutes from Broadway, and you're going to be 1949. Uh, All right, kid? Okay. Let her go. 17, 17 minutes from Broadway. Rasmus I love that jazz. <laughs> and I can't be in the town. John, but I, there's a very strange thing that, pardon me, but phone, pardon me, John phone keeps ringing all the time. <laughs> Hello? Yeah? Victor! What? You got a sponsor? Victor, wait, I'm telling the people, Victor's got a sponsor. I'm so happy, you, you got a sponsor, I'm glad. Yes, well, I, I, I want to tell the audience something, yes. This is very interesting what I have to tell you, ladies and gentlemen. John, this, I have one in my automobile, but I shouldn't have one in my trousers. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Yes? Yeah. No, madam, I did not say that my uncle... No, uh, no, he, I didn't say he sold silk sofas. No, I, I said he milked gophers. <laughs> That's why he milked, yes. He's a gopher. No, I don't know how he milks him. He, he looks for a, a, a gopher hole and he waits for a gopher to come out. And he milks it. <laughs> the silliest conversation. What? I don't know how he milks it. He sits on a low stool and he has tiny fingers. <laughs> I never get a chance to finish it. <laughs> for men and women. Your jeweler has a wide assortment of Spidell watch bands and a variety of glamorous styles, from $5.95 to $13.50 for women, and from $7.95 to $14.95 for men, tax included. This is the Spidell Sir Galahad for men, and this is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. The incarnation of the Word constitutes the very essence of Christ's mission of Redeemer and Savior, as his name implies, Jesus. He is the eternal High Priest, thus he is the Pontiff, the bridge uniting the two shores of time and eternity. 
The only reason that Jesus came to this earth was for the forgiveness of our sins. Jesus Christ says that there is greater joy in heaven for one sinner who converts than for 99 righteous who have no need of repentance. Il sacerdote. The priest is like the doctor who comes to treat the wounds. Verso le ferite. Il Signore ha The Lord has instituted this sacrament of forgiveness and reconciliation precisely as a means for confirming his love for us. For he does not seek the death of the sinner, but that we might convert and have life, and life in abundance. Si converta e abbia la vita e la abbia in abbondanza. We are witnesses of a mystery of divine life that is infused in the soul at the moment of baptism in a sort of grafting as it were. Through baptism we are grafted into Christ and we receive the abundance of his gifts. Then we begin to grow and grow and he feeds us with the Eucharist. This is my body, this is my blood offered in sacrifice for you. Thus, through Christ's sacrifice, we are reconciled with God, and through this reconciliation, in this reconciliation, we are nurtured by a Eucharistic life, Holy Communion, and all that is implied by the life of grace and its conservation. However, with all our miseries, we are like jars of clay carrying this great treasure. We are damaged, flawed by original sin. Even though we have been redeemed in the blood of Christ, we carry this weakness in us and as a consequence this inclination to evil and not only to good obviously salvati da esso nel sangue di Cristo però portiamo una debolezza dentro di noi quindi un'inclinazione anche al male e non solo al bene ovviamente il popolo di Israele la misericordia di Dio nell'antico in the old testament the Israelites experienced God's mercy in different ways, especially through the prophets. They called the Israelites. They placed particular emphasis on His mercy and called the people of God to fidelity. The Lord is faithful. Make an effort to be faithful in return. Alla fedeltà, il Signore è fedele, cercate di essere fedeli anche voi. Even when the people were unfaithful, God remained faithful towards them as a sign of his mercy. Dio continuava nella sua fedeltà verso il suo popolo mostrando la sua misericordia. We see the, the, the closeness of God, our Heavenly Father, to us through the Incarnation, through His Son becoming flesh like us, living amongst us. And in the Gospel, we see the mercy of God and His compassion for the sick and the poor, for those who are sinners, particularly for those who are uh, public sinners, and of it, not only his mercy, but of his defense of them, in his care for them, in his wanting to protect them, and in that way to show them the depth of God's love for them as individuals. In the parable del hijo pródigo, in the parable of the prodigal son, which some refer to as the parable of the merciful father, we are witnesses of the true meaning of conversion and what it implies for man. In other words, coming to terms with the fact that sin is evil. The prodigal son returns home because he realizes the consequences of his sin and that sin is evil. This parable of the prodigal son is extremely clear evidence of the father's mercy as seen in the son's return to the father's house and in the fact that the father prepares a feast. Because forgiveness and reconciliation are always reasons to celebrate. But of course, in order for us to experience and accept forgiveness, 
we must previously undergo a conversion and repent of our sins. Experimentar y, hace, y asumir el perdón necesitamos antes la conversión, el arrepentimiento. It is the first gift that Jesus gave to the church at his resurrection. After having suffered for our sins, he now manifests himself with this new life and shows that he can bring this new life to, to us. He conferred this power upon his apostles. Whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them. Whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. Thus the apostles received this responsibility, that of acting in persona Christi. Agire in persona Christi. It is precisely from this affirmation of Jesus that we find the need for a minister to reconcile the penitent with God. Christ gave the power for the forgiveness of sins to his apostles. And St. Paul in the second letter to the Corinthians chapter 5 says that it is the apostles and their successors, the bishops and and those who assist them, the priests, who bring about this reconciliation with God our Heavenly Father. This process of reconciliation is something that is entrusted to the church and is a very powerful means within the church for personal uh, salvation. People have turned away from God and look to their own sufficiency. They refuse to put God first on their scale of values. Dio al primo posto. They become their own arbitrators in, in everything. They decide what is good and what is bad without instruction. They prefer to live as if God did not exist. Of course, what has been lost is the sense of sin. If I don't consider myself a sinner, if I don't think I do anything wrong, I run the risk of becoming arrogant. Arrogante. People have lost a sense of sin because of ignorance and because of bad example, because of lack of catechesis, and because they're not interested in the good, only in the expedient, in what they can acquire here and now, quickly, for their own gratification. And sometimes, of course, people are so smothered by their own sinfulness that they don't want to face it, that they think that what they're doing is right, and thus they harden their hearts and keep God at a distance. I think that this topic is, today, more than ever, a challenge for the Church, who is both mother and teacher. As teacher, she must instruct and remind the faithful of the good news of the gospel of mercy. And as mother, she must embrace her children who seek this mercy. This marvelous sacrament, the sacrament of penance or confession or reconciliation, which renews us internally over the course of this life in which we undergo trials, temptations from within, which are those that come from our old self, and external temptations, which are those that provoke our old self from the outside. Thus we can commit a grave fault when there is grave matter and full awareness, deliberate consent, this is called mortal sin. In that case, what occurs? We can use the human body as an example. When a blood clot is produced, the blood no longer reaches the heart due to the formation of an air bubble. Thus, there is a risk of death because of this air bubble that blocks the regular circulation of blood. This is similar to what occurs on a supernatural level. There's this problematic air bubble, which is our sin. That is what prevents the blood of Christ, the life of grace, from circulating within us. An operation is necessary. We're not talking about an emergency surgical procedure, 
but an operation which is always available to us, the infinite love of God. L'urgenza, ma si tratta dell'intervento sempre disponibile dell'amore infinito di Dio. It's a way for each one to be united with the Lord or to be to recognize the sins and to reconcile their differences with God. Il Signore ha voluto istituire The Lord has instituted this sacrament of forgiveness and reconciliation precisely as a means for reconfirming his love for us. Thanks to this gift, we can always return to him through the sacrament of reconciliation, of penance, which we celebrate after our baptism. Attraverso il sacramento della riconciliazione e della penitenza che si celebra dopo il nostro battesimo. We must respect the corresponding parts of this sacrament. First of all, after making a good examination of conscience, we must sincerely repent of our sins. We must truly be grieved of our faults. What is the examination of conscience? It implies an analysis of our behavior to see if we've done God's will or our own because that's what sin is in the end, doing my own will instead of God's will. That's why I must discover God's will, and I can find it in the Ten Commandments, to see whether or not I've lived accordingly, to see if I've done my own will or God's will. An upright conscience is always open to repentance when we sin, which is something the conscience recognizes, thanks to the voice of God that speaks to our heart, and also when we humbly accept our sinfulness at the light of God's Word and in its authentic interpretation offered to us by the Church's magisterium. By admitting their sins, I recognize that they've done something wrong. Once that has been recognized, is contrite about the sin which has been committed, has God's forgiveness, has purpose of amendment to make a difference in the future. They also need to uh, have a sense of, of sorrow for their sins, that they really do want to turn their lives around and they want to follow Christ more closely, with greater humility, with greater confidence in the grace of God and in what He can do for us. True contrition springs from a growing awareness of God's love and in realizing our ingratitude, our slowness of heart, our lack of understanding, our indifference to God's love. Then, we tell the priest all our sins. The priest is there to mediate the mercy and the compassion of, of Christ. He's there on behalf of the whole church. Because, you know, when we sin, we not only uh, offend God, we not only damage ourselves, but because we belong to the mystical body of Christ, the church, we also damage the health of the church itself and the holiness of the church. So it is the priest who in persona Christi, in the person of Christ, sits there to receive us back, to, to give us compassion, to forgive our sins, but also to help us to, to turn towards God. La confession is fatta con fede. When a confession is made with faith, everything falls back into place because the Lord is always ready to receive us. Like the father from the parable of the prodigal son, with arms wide open, he awaits us in the confessional. All we have to do is be sincere and have contrition in our hearts. The priest is there on the other side of the confessional and as altar Christus, he says, I absolve you and he gives me a corresponding penance which is always very little in comparison to our sins, which are of an immense gravity given the fact that they are an offense to God who is infinite. 
e quella, quel dolore. And that sorrow for our sin, the absolution, the resolution to sin no more with the help of God's grace and the fact that we do this small penance as an act of obedience, as an act of submission to what God's minister has judged appropriate for my soul in that moment, all this reestablishes our complete harmony and friendship with God. Ricostruisce la, la, la piena armonia e quindi l'amicizia con Dio. Our Lord does two things for us whenever we go to confession. He first of all forgives us our sins and he does that because he loves us. And he then gives us what the church calls actual grace. That is the grace that uh, you need to overcome your sins and that I need to overcome my sins. And your needs may be different from my needs. But that actual grace is given to us in, in the sacrament. La celebrazione The ordinary celebration of the sacrament of penance is with an individual, one person, who has to make a complete confession of his sins with a, with a priest. However, there may be certain occasions in which it is impossible to reach the priest in person. Non è possibile presentarsi personalmente dal sacerdote. Por ejemplo, si existe un peligro... For example, in danger of death, the absolution of several penitents at once is permitted. In the case of a natural disaster or a plane crash, any cause that prevents the priest or priests present from hearing the individual confession of all those present. Another case in which this kind of absolution is permitted without having previously made an individual confession is if, due to certain extraordinary circumstances and given the large number of penitents, omitting the absolution would deprive these faithful of sacramental grace and holy communion for a long time, if it's of no fault of their own. According to the Code of Canon Law, the diocesan bishop, in accordance with the local bishop's conference, is the judge of whether or not the conditions required for general absolution exist. Se un, uh, credente. If one or more faithful have received general absolution, they are obliged to make an individual and complete confession with a confessor as soon as possible in order to receive the absolution from a priest through the confession of their sins. Anche la soluzione da parte di un sacerdote confessando i suoi peccati. Although it is not strictly necessary for the confession of venial sins, the Church has always recommended it. Firstly, because it helps form the consciences of the faithful. It also helps us fight against our bad tendencies, and it lets the Lord heal us with the grace of the sacrament. Not only that, but when a Catholic goes to confession frequently, he experiences the Father's mercy and he himself becomes merciful. As he experiences mercy, he becomes more merciful towards others. Every sin, even those we refer to as venial or less serious, have a corresponding temporal punishment. Even when the sin is erased, the temporal punishment remains. The indulgence is the remission of temporal punishment. For God, they are erased because it is the Church that distributes the treasures of His mercy. Distribuisce il tesoro della misericordia. Qui siamo incentivati, vedete, non è come pagare delle We are given incentives to do good. It's not just like paying taxes. Instead, we are given incentives to gain the indulgences that are linked to certain moments, certain sacred acts, certain prayers, certain works of charity, etc. Orazioni, determinate opere di carità, etc. Thus, there is a remittance of the punishment due for our sins from the moment of our baptism up until that moment. 
This is an amazing reality which unfortunately often remains an afterthought. It is an infinite treasure of the church. Thus the punishment is removed. God's grace accompanies us in every moment, and these are God's treasures, which he delights in lavishing upon us. Not only that, but the proper conditions are also necessary. And what are the conditions? That our heart be free from any attachment to sin and have a firm resolution to not commit sins in the future. Every day in our ministry, we see the mercy of God at work, in one way or the other. I find a great satisfaction in being able to administer this sacrament. The penitent confesses his sins, not because of who you are humanly speaking, but because of who you are as a priest, as a representative of Christ. So of course, the sacrament of confession obliges you to enter into the mystery of Christ, into the mystery of the church, and make an act of faith. Sono un monaco benedictino. I am a Benedictine monk, and chapter 20 of the rule of St. Benedict is one I treasure most. It makes reference to personal prayer, recalling that it is not on account of our many words, but for our purity of heart and tears of repentance that the Lord listens to our prayer. For me, the most significant experiences that I have had as a confessor in this basilica or when there is a return to the faith which occurs after years away from the confessional and concludes in tears of repentance precisely because of this undeniable experience of the father's forgiveness who always always receives us with a loving merciful embrace when people see a priest in the confessional they feel encouraged to go to confession. It is a fundamental pastoral norm. If you want the people to go to confession, have a seat in the confessional. Somebody is bound to show up. In fact, they do. Here in the basilicas in Rome, in the four papal basilicas, there are always people seeking confession precisely for this reason, because the priests have never lost the custom of going to the confessional. Here our work is endless. Thanks be to God, there is an overwhelming number of people who come to the confessional, each one of them with their story. Obviously, we must offer them the right information about the Sacrament of Reconciliation, reminding them that it is not simply a pass to be able to receive the Eucharist, nor is the confessional where we come to get rid of our baggage of sin so we can feel lighter and then continue living as always. Because in this sacrament, the Lord gives us the grace we need in order to change our life. Nowadays, there are certain situations that make it impossible for someone to receive the sacrament of penance. And perhaps without realizing it, the penitent does not inform the priest. That is when you just have to put yourself in God's hands asking that he inspire you to ask the right question, to discern whether or not the individual is apt to receive the sacrament. The aptitude is always determined by the repentance. In other words, if the penitent does not feel remorse for his sins or is habitually living in sin, he cannot receive the absolution given the lack of remorse. It is not that God refuses to give the absolution, on the contrary, as we said earlier, that is precisely why he has come, to forgive, to absolve, to show us his mercy. Nonetheless, if remorse is lacking, if there is no true conversion on our part, it's not that God doesn't want to forgive us, it's that we do not want to receive his forgiveness. We are the ones who make it impossible for ourselves to receive God's forgiveness. The priest is like the doctor who comes to treat the wounds. The priest is like the teacher giving a lesson. He is also like the pastor who encourages. And he is also like the judge that sheds light on a given situation in which a person is living. And then he acts as priest 
giving the absolution in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So this proves just how great, just how holy the vocation of every priest, every confessor is. It also demonstrates just how delicate each priest's mission is in the sacrament of reconciliation. La missione di ogni sacerdote anche nel sacramento della riconciliazione. Cada vez che cometo un peccato. There's no denying that every time I commit a sin or something I've done wrong weighs me down. The fact that I can confess it and be forgiven and that through prayer I can learn to forgive myself, all this helps. But we also need this other manifestation, making the effort to express it verbally to a priest. And I've witnessed how many times a great weight has been lifted off my heart. After confessing my sins, after removing this burden on my conscience, after removing this weight of knowing that I have made mistakes, I feel lighter, freer, and with a renewed desire to continue doing good. And this makes me very happy. We would be foolish not to use this instrument and think only of confessing ourselves directly with God, when it is precisely God himself, through his son Jesus, who has given the apostles the possibility of receiving grace through this important instrument, which is the ministry, the sacrament of reconciliation. It is a sign of God's loving care for us. In establishing this sacrament, the Lord has once again opened us the door to His love and forgiveness. We are reconciled with Him, with the Church, with others. Every time we step into the confessional, it is really as though we were entering into the merciful heart of God, who is the only one who can heal us of the wounds we carry in our heart and take away the sin that keeps us from growing in our friendship with Him.